York, Stephen Pico, then a student council president, remembers sitting at a Long Island school board meeting in the mid-70s when a librarian whispered to him that board members had entered the library after hours seeking out books to ban. Talk of the ban turned out to be true. After attending a 1975 conference sponsored by a conservative political group, Island Trees school board members removed titles such as Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five and Richard Wright's Black Boy, deeming these and other books to be anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-Semitic and Jew. Then, as with now, many book bans are by authors of color and religious minorities. Related, weaponized grooming rhetoric is taking a toll on LGBTQ community and child sex abuse survivors see red banned books, Tennessee Library releases a library card to combat book bans opinion, teachers are suffering, so we're putting our appreciation into action today, conservative lawmakers in Sever. Pico and other literary advocates have grown increasingly concerned about the uptick in the number of book challenges, the politics behind them and the way race features prominently in challenge tones. Politicians are using book banning as part of the game plan to frighten parents, to scare voters. Joanna Miller, director of the Education Policy Center at the New York Civil Liberties Union, said book banning is less about keeping children safe and more about telling certain people they do not belong. This is an issue where the white majority is using its power to push against people who have. Between September 1st and November 30th, more than 330 unique cases of book challenges were reported, doubling the number of accounts from 2020, the American Library Association's Office for Intellectual Freedom said. Staff at the organization concede that the true number is likely higher, given librarians and educators might have quietly removed books to sidestep controversy.